Hey there, I uh, hope you can hear me. So we're back yeah, on our stream yeah, with yeah. Phantom Hellcat. Um, Norman Lander is here, the creative director and co-founder of Ironbird Creations. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, hello, hello. So we are, we are live already. Okay. We're right, yeah. <laughs> hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to your show. Yeah, thanks for coming. So we already met at Gamescom, talked briefly about the game. Um, what is Phantom Halcat? Can you tell me the basic premise of the game? Yeah, of course. So the Phantom Halcat uh, is a action game which is mixing, uh, which is actually mixing two genres. From uh, one side, it is a hack and slash title presented from third camera, 3D camera perspective, and on another side, it is a 2D action platformer. And the key feature of the game is that it aren't these aren't separate parts of the game so basically speaking uh, this uh, this is one fluent uh, experience which is uh, one game so you are having the same controls in both perspectives uh, you are the the height of the jump the movement the character motion is basically the same so uh, we were inspired by uh, various games but uh, I don't know if you want me to talk about it right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. I think some of the inspirations are like Devil May Cry, Nier Automata, and Hollow Knight, you told me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we like to use this quote, Devil May Cry meets Nier Automata with a twist. Uh, if we talk about Devil May Cry, the, ma the main inspiration for this is, uh, uh, is about this over-the-top visceral combat with uh, various combos, uh, ground attacks, aerial attacks, and knocking up enemies, knocking down, and making them just fall apart <laughs> on the yes. on the battle arena. And uh, about near automata, it's mostly connected with this fluent camera the perspective change. If you played the game, you probably remember that there were some sections of the game when 3D turned into 2D, right. and you you had you still had this feeling that you control the same character and it, the change of the mode didn't mean that uh, it's a totally different game now so uh, and there's also this twist which i may uh, describe a little bit later because it is strongly connected with the setting of the game which is this uh, magical theater uh so maybe a few words about the story uh, so the action takes place in a magical theater, which uh, actually works as a secret prison for demons. And the mother of the main character is a guardian of this prison, so... Uh, unfortunately, our main character doesn't have the best relationship with her mother, that's why... Uh, that's why she doesn't... she isn't aware of the true nature of this place. That's why when she visits uh, her mother in this theater, accidentally she breaks the seal and... Uh, Demons are free, and now you, and they, and they kidnap your mother. So your job is basically, is basically speaking, uh, uh, fixing the mess you did. <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, it is also a story about the family re reunion because by playing the game, by uh, having this tr big adventure uh, with various uh, biomes and settings, you are learning more and more about your. Uh, mother's true, uh, your mother's true life, and so these are these two sides of the story, which are behind uh, behind the game. How did you come up with um, changing the perspective in that way? Uh, are you a big fan of Nier Automata, or have you played other games before that that uh, did that shift in perspective? Honestly speaking, uh, there were two inspirations. One of that was. Just like you said, near Automata, because when I played it for the first time, uh, this game was a big discover me for me. Uh, how it, this is a very syncretic title. If you look at how many gameplay uh, perspectives are presented in the game, yeah, right. Even say that how many gameplay uh, game genres are inside one. Exactly, game. that's incredible. But of course, uh, it isn't the only reason why we wanted to create this game. Uh, because if you look at the market, currently uh, the, mo the most of the major, let's say, mainstream titles for uh, consoles and PCs are mostly the Souls-likes, Roguelikes, games like that. And if you look at the same industry around 10 years ago, 
you had uh, so many slashers. I remember the month when there was a release of God of War 3, Bayonetta and Dante's Infer- Inferno in a very short window of time. So mm. it was all about bil- building this feeling of power, that you are a powerful character that is a master of the situation. And if you look at the current market, okay, there are some uh, Japanese games that are that are still uh, creating this feeling for players, that they're still delivering you this fantasy of being a superhero. But if you look at the West, I have a impression that slashers are not so popular anymore. And there, there's a, there's still a big group of players that uh, still wish to play these kind of games. So that's why we wanted to follow this slash uh, hack and slash path. <laughs> mm-hmm. What inspired you to the uh, story? Why is it set in a theater? Are you big fans of theater uh, at Arumbert? Uh, actually speaking, uh, it was one of the uh, one of the solution to uh for it, it was an answer for a few questions first of all we wanted to give this game a pretty western feeling that is to, just to show that it is a is a strongly west western setting and we thought that theater might be one of the uh, let's say tools to build uh di- build this western vibe for the game to show that it's it is not a Another Japan Japan inspired game. We we of course love <laughs> Japanese games. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for Bayonetta 3, uh, personally. Uh, but uh, also it is also a pretty good trick to uh, build a pretty big variety in this world uh, because if you look at the world structure, uh, for example, we presented in, during the trailer the uh, setting which was inspired by the Transylvania by uh, by Dracula's castle, but uh, at the same time, if we are in the theater, it doesn't mean that we have to keep to one setting. We are we are also not uh, in chains of this rule of place and time, so we can play with the time of the action, with the place right. of the action. So, so think about the uh, think about the cinema hall. You have various cinema rooms inside uh, which you can enter from uh, this hall. And in every room, you have a different movie. And they do not have to be connected to each other. And you can basically, just like in our game, you can jump between settings depending on the chapter. Mm -hmm. So basically speaking, this is a pretty useful tool. And another solution which we use is we can jump from one place to another during one chapter thanks to using some uh, backstage elements, theater props, which let us to push the action much further. Even during the, during the tra- trailer, you could see you could see the moment when sun turns into a moon, right? And and it happens during a few seconds. So it's a pretty useful trick. Also, there's a castle at the end of the bridge, in which our main character is running through, and we don't have to enter the gate, uh, the main gate and main hall. We you can, can sort of uh, teleport. Y- yeah, the, maybe teleport might be not the best word, but it, you enter backstage word. with yeah. yeah, we can say a backstage which is under the bridge, and then when you leave the backstage, you are already inside uh, the middle of the castle. So, so uh, you can cut out some idle times that usually would be in the yeah. game. Exactly, exactly. This is the best uh, description of it, and it is also a tool which allows us to build some unpredictable. Uh, experience for the player because uh, uh, he or she uh, might not know what's about what's around the corner right how do you keep it believable then uh, when you can just change everything at any moment you know from from one side it is uh, there's still a narrative side for it so there's a story behind it Uh, and also we are uh, we are using a lot of this theatrical tools like props, like ropes, like platforms. So the player will be always aware that he's on a some kind of magical stage. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you are in a, a fantasy world which has a strong realistic feeling of a real place. You will be aware uh, that it is a theater for the whole for the whole play- playthrough. How long will the actual game be? 
we are aiming uh, we are aiming for our, around seven eight hours but we are also thinking about some uh, replayability we implemented things like hidden challenges secrets or treasures because you pro- you probably could already see that it is a strong gameplay exp- uh, game gameplay oriented game yeah uh, that's why we wanted to add this second layer of the story for the for the collectibles you will collect things like audio logs you can use this walkman uh, just to listen to some story behind the prison behind the theater the past of your mother so it will we believe that it will be appealing for players who not only want to play the game but they also want to learn something about the present the presented world mm-hmm. so uh, so the replay replayability will be strongly connected with uh, completing uh, the levels for 100 percent uh, but the uh, main story is actually pretty straightforward so do you have any say in the story and the development of the story like some decisions you can make Oh, actually, it is a pretty linear experience because we wanted to, uh, just like I said, we are mostly focusing on the gameplay. That's why, uh, just like classic slasher titles, it will into it will not be any kind of RPG or games like that, yeah. uh, which lets you have different outcomes. It's mostly one experience with chapters and. Uh, and during the playthrough, you can, of course, uh, upgrade different things, like these masks you collect. To re- because, oh, maybe I can tell a few words about masks. Yeah, sure. Because, these are, because during the trailer, uh, you could see the basic weapon, this sword, which is under the, let's say, square button, if you play on DualShock mm-hmm. controller. But under the triangle button, there's a slot, a slot for a secondary weapon. And what kind of a weapon it is, is strongly connected with the currently equipped mask. Because okay. during the gameplay, you're collecting different masks and they are giving you some... Maybe it is a little bit more complicated in the full game, yeah. but for, for, for this show, I will just say that these masks are giving you a secondary weapon. And you can change them on the D-pad arrows on your controller, mm-hmm. and just like a real-time weapon change. And by equipping the mask, you are changing the secondary weapon, and you can make various combos with both of these weapons, like the basic weapon and the secondary weapon. So there are various combos depending on the currently equipped, currently mm-hmm. equipped mask. And of course, these masks are also a way to make some a small skill tree, which allows you to unlock uh, new passive abilities, which are accumulating in the character, and also some active abilities which are strongly connected with the with the secondary weapon so it works like that mm-hmm. are there any abilities you can talk about that you will unlock in the game uh, for example i can talk about this dash attack it appeared during the tra- trailer because right. you have this pretty maybe I'll, maybe i will start with introducing introducing the dash move because it works in a few ways in our game and it is also connected with the combat and upgrading abilities. Because I can, as you can see in the trailer, the character turns into a, a non-physical form of some kind of spirit, smoke, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and in platforming sections, it allows you just to uh, mix it with the jumping or jumping or double jumping. And it also works as a, uh, as a wall dash, so we can climb upwards on a wall mm-hmm. to get to some places or to do some wall dash. So you can see some strong inspirations of games like uh, Ho- uh, Hollow Knight or games like that. Uh, and uh, oh, here it is, perfect, <laughs> exactly. So on the uh, first action, player didn't press the jump at all. He just dashed through the uh, through the wall and he got up. He got upstairs, something like right. that. And uh, after that, he made a double jump and dashed to get on the platform. But if there was no platform up. You could just press the jump button, jump button after dashing, and you would jump to the op- uh, wall, jump to the opposite side, uh-huh. and it allows us to build uh, to build some in, uh, interesting uh, vertical platforming sequences. But for the combat, it can work as basically as a dodge move. Uh, so you you are dodging enemy attack. That's pretty basic. 
but if you if you upgrade the dash you can you can make a special dash attack action which is connected with uh, pressing the dash and uh, and uh, attack button and of course there's there's also a counter attack window uh, so if you properly time the dash action you can press the attack button during enemy's attack to unleash a powerful counter attack move which gives you much more additional points and also uh, and also so deals massive damage to the enemy so yeah speaking of message damage uh, we see that right there um do you already have a, a rating in germany or in other countries oh i'm afraid we do not have the rating yet but i would need to ask uh, people from our publishing because uh, i'm mostly focused on developing the game <laughs> they're doing sure kind of they they would tell you to dial it a little down with the violence if it's <laughs> uh, necessary <laughs> yeah uh, to, to be fair it was a first reveal of the game this trailer during the games come so probably something didn't happen yet but but I will inform you as soon as I will know, or as soon as it will happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, what can I tell you more about the? Well, you, you told me at Gamescom that you decided to not have combat in two D. Maybe you can talk about that. Ex exactly. Exactly. Because uh, the one thing is that you could see the two D platforming uh, on the trailer because we wanted to emphasize this. Uh, difference between 3D combat and 2D platforming. It doesn't mean that we will not have the 3D platforming because mm -hmm. it, we all, uh, it's already in game and it works uh, the same on some. Le so there are some sections on level on levels which are about 3D platforming. But about the combat, uh, we decided to focus mostly on the 3D combat without the, not inside this 2D platforming sections because after the implementation. It felt a little bit different, and it would require some adjustments, which would change the game uh, into a little bit different experience. And as I told you, it's a very important important thing for us to have this feeling of one experience, that these are not separate parts of one game, that we are playing all the time one single game. So that's why, uh, that's why we decided not to add this 2D combat section. And maybe let's talk more about the actual twist, uh, we, which is related to theater, because I told you already about the shortcuts, but it also refers to the visual side, uh, because we actually tried to use the real world theater elements in building the world's game. You can probably see this spotlight, spotlight which yeah. are uh, following players in uh, player in some combat uh, sections. Mm -hmm. They can highlight some important element, important elements of environment. We can, uh, they can be turned on, turned off. It is mostly done by, like, let's say, directed by the le level design. So if we want, we want the player to feel a, as he's a part of the theater play, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also use all kind of props. Some of them are, are flat. And if you look at the level structure. We try to make this more, uh, this more uh, 3D elements to be closer to player, and some of the 2D flat elements are far away to make the illusion of 3D. So right. it is the way of world building which we use through the whole game. So no matter no matter which setting it is, there are some rules which are kept in all in all biomes in in all chapters. So um, each 3D uh, segment where you're fighting is basically like a small arena. Can you maybe describe it like that? Like a small uh, stage? There are different kind of stages. I don't want to tell more yet because sure. it is also connected with the env environment. Mm -hmm. Because we, in this game we can use some environment, environment elements uh, as a weapon. Yeah, for example, if you cut some ropes, some heavy props may fall on, on enemies and you yeah. get additional points for uh, taking them down in this way. But uh, basically speaking, there are many, there are a few kinds of arenas. I, I cannot tell more yet, but uh, we want to focus on this, this type of encounters. 
yes, that's what I can tell for now. And the enemy uh, types, the types of enemy you encounter are different from each uh, biome also? Do they differ? Uh, there are different enemy types. For this trailer, we just use this basic enemy, uh, basic melee enemy, but we uh, also have some enemies who, let's say, are representing different archetypes of enemies. Some of them are also flying enemies. And that's why uh, we have this teleport skill which gives us a lot of mobility on right. the arena uh, because we didn't decide to go for the ranged attacks. We wanted to have this uh, speed-oriented swift main character who is able to quickly move around the arena and from, enemy, from one enemy to another. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, we will be encountering various enemy, enemy types and there will be some boss fights. Nice the game, um, but, but I, I cannot hmm. show I cannot show <laughs> more yet. Yeah. yeah, I'm dying to see more actually, but I'm sure we will see more uh, pretty soon. So there are no like um, heavy weapons like maces that you can use. It's mostly um, swords that you will use. Uh, that's uh, I cannot say yes, and I cannot say no for uh, as an answer to this question. Uh, because it would be, let's say, a spoiler, uh, a spoiler for the secondary weapons. Uh, but uh, I can tell you more about this uh, Hollow Knight reference, because uh, this is a pretty important thing for, for us, because as a developer, we are mostly focusing on gameplay. And that's why uh, it was very important thing for us. Uh, to build a very precise, responsive controls, which are uh, because if the game is uh, one side is the combat, but also we have this platforming, and uh, we want the player to be challenged by the game, not by the controller. Right. <laughs> That's uh, and in platform in platforming games, this is a very important feature, not to have this feeling of a uh, lag inside the controller or things like that. So we worked a lot to make all of this, all of the movements feel very precise. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the reference to the Hollow Knight, for, at least for, for us. Of course, Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania, and it is a, it is a pretty hardcore Metroidvania. And we are offering a li more linear experience. But uh, if you look at Hollow Knight structure, it is very... Uh, combat oriented if you look at the boss fights or some var various bigger encounters but on the other side it also offers some uh, pretty difficult platforming challenges yeah. and uh, if you look at, at other slasher titles they're mostly combat oriented and the movement between one combat arena to another is most, mostly about walk walk jump dash uh, cutscene and <laughs> another <laughs> combat and uh, that's why we wanted to add something new to the genre by uh, by implementing these uh, platforming sections uh, in more challenging way than usual. Mm -hmm. Are there also kind of environmental puzzles that you have to solve? Uh, Great traversal? Uh, Is it only yeah. jump and run or are there maybe some no, no. puzzles? Actually, there are some there are some pretty basic puzzles. Uh, uh, unfortunately, nothing like that appears on the trailer. But uh, most of them, most of the, let's say, tr uh, platforming is about agility puzzles, something like that. But right. we're also, uh, we also, we also have some, let's say, pretty basic puzzles, which are changing the pacing of the game because pacing is pretty important, important thing for us as developers yes well it's definitely a trend uh, that i noticed at gamescom that uh people want to have more hands-on games uh, that focus on gameplay and not uh, have uh, 30 minutes cutscenes in a row <laughs> it's yeah. something i noticed at wanted dead for example is one example uh, from 101 industries they also told me that they uh, want to go back to the ps2 era where it's more um based on gameplay actually yeah that I totally agree that uh, a lot of, especially triple A titles, are very, let's say, story tiring, and, and, and cast scenes yeah. are appearing. 
And that's why when we, when you could see our trailer on the opening night live, there were many great trailers, but our trailer was one of those few which was very gameplay oriented. Like we didn't want to have, you know, let's say for, uh, 20 seconds of story and then short 10 seconds of gameplay and that's the end. We really wanted to show players uh, that uh, we are... How the game actually plays out. Yeah, we, uh, after all, we are all gamers. We also know what gamers want and uh, the whole answer, the whole feedback we, we received after the games come from players who appeared on, for example, on our Discord channels. Uh, oh, maybe this is a good way to make a small advertising of our, sure. of our new Iron Bird uh, Discord channel, which is possible to. Uh, you, you can enter it from the Steam page of Phantom Hellcat. But sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I just needed to add it. Yeah, sure, uh, but, do that. Uh, but returning to the top, back to the topic, uh, we received a very positive feedback from players all around the world about uh, us returning to this kind of genre this kind of game and to and they also appreciated that we focused mostly on the gameplay during both of our trailers and uh, this and I'd like just I would just like to thank for this trust and this is the greatest reward for us as developers to see how players are getting hyped about the game we are doing because as players, we know the same feeling for, for example, for other titles when we are getting hyped by the games like games we like, and this is the greatest reward the developer can get from from the community. Yeah, audience. yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to playing it. Actually, so when can we play it? When can we expect Phantom Hellcat? Uh, this is one of uh, the answers. I cannot give you yet. Uh, we are still discussing this thing with our publisher, and uh, this is the this is the answer which will come from our publisher. But I will I believe that this answer will appear sooner than later. So as a developer, I still have a let's say limited uh, limited things I can tell about the game. Sure. I would love to tell you everything. <laughs> You know how it works in the industry. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking more about the game once we actually can show more, um, maybe also play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w I would gladly uh, contact you again when it will be, when there will be a playable demo and maybe we can discuss it again. <laughs> right, yeah, let's be in touch. Really looking forward to playing it. Okay, so... So thank you so much for coming, and yeah, um, wishlist it now on Steam. Um, you can't probably pre-order it yet, but as Norman said, it shouldn't be too long uh, until we know when the game is actually coming. So yeah. yeah, join the Discord. I think it's called Iron Bird Creations, probably. Yep, uh, Iron Bird Creations official server. That's how it. That's how it is called. You can get to it from our Steam, Steam page. page. You can awesome. watch this, the game and please f follow it. We will gladly answer uh, other questions <laughs> on the channel. So thank you very much for the invitation once again. Yeah, thank you so much for coming, Norman. Can't wait to see more of it. Okay, so bye-bye. So, see ya. See you. <laughs>